What up guys? So I noticed there's a lot of misconceptions regarding plastics and glues. So I'm gonna try to uh, help out, share a bit of the things I know and how I do things. And big topic is gonna be making strong crutches. But before that, let's get to plastics. So the original G.I. Joe plastics were made of high quality ABS. Um, I suspect that the elbow joints, which were standard, were some kind of nylon or uh, polycarbonate because these were standards. They were just shot in different colors, but they never changed the design. The forearm seemed to have evolved. The original ones were hard ABS with a lot of broken thumbs, and then they changed the composition to a softer plastic. So uh, a little... Uh, lecturing here but just to we understand what we're dealing with here ABS has acrylic in it but a styrene so the styrene in it so styrene is cheap it based on the composition we can make it quite strong for example most of the GI Joe vehicles were made of styrene like the shells would be made of styrene obviously when you put pigments in it for color it affects the quality so for example white color yellow color dark colors like dark green dark blue tends to be an issue. Uh, again, the recipe, the composition of the plastic, you can source good quality plastic, it costs more. But uh, the G.I. Joe team did a great job in the 80s when you use styrene, thick styrene, to look at the molar, for example. So thick, good quality styrene. And then on smaller parts, they use polypropylene, PP. So, the downside of polypropylene at the time, it was really cheap, but the downside was, see that one still breaks, um, you cannot mold crisp stuff and it tends to shrink. So it warps. A uh, great example again is the molar or the suspension arms warp, right? So the styrene is more stable over time, except it dries out. So uh, let's talk about plasticity, plastics, as it is, they're not supposed to be pottery. So acrylic, for example, is very crisp, transparent, whatnot, but it breaks, it's, it's like glass, it's brittle. So when we want plasticity, we want a bit of give, we want some strength, some stability over time. So in the composition of the EBS, depending on a different kind is, you know, we want strength, we want a specific color, we want resilience to temperatures, uh, also, when the plastic cools off, it doesn't warp as much, assuming it's even thicknesses. So this is, in a nutshell, I don't, you know, we're not going to go too big in it, but if you know a little bit about plastic injections, they are uh, limitations. And a great example is Playmobil. Playmobil is not using ABS. They're using very high quality star polystyrene, styrene or polystyrene, right, which is PS. And... Uh, why? Because it has a lower melting point, a lower, uh, you know, mold point, I don't know what, what you would call them, but it's cheaper, but they make such a good job and uh, it can be done. So styrene is often thought to be a cheap plastic and it's not, it doesn't have to be like this. Just like ABS, ABS we think it's high quality like Legos. Well, from the Far East on some knockoffs, depending on the composition and the recipe, you can have very crappy ABS. It happens. So the crotches, we know the breakage, you know, it's ABS. Um, over time, plastic ages. So some worse than others, based on exposition to UV, sunlight is the worst enemy. Chemicals, chemical reaction, just age. Um, Plastics absorb humidity to some extent, some crack, some don't. On a lot of vintage toys, nylon, that's another one not on the list, nylons crack uh, over time. So you've got like nylon pinions pressed on motors and they crack over time. Things happen. Uh, in my experience, I tried to avoid 1982 to 1984 Joes because it looks like they did not figure their plastics all the way or they had weird batches. Some storm shadows are great, some are horrible, so there's a lot of inconsistency. And it sounds that, it feels to me that in 85, they had a better grasp on their um, plastic recipes, on, on the figures at least. It's just my opinion. Now, let's talk about gluing plastic, fixing things. 
I would recommend, don't use super glue, and I'll tell you why. It's Super glue is the lazy man's glue, and uh, it does not work for us, I'll tell you why. So, I know a lot of people use super glue, and you're gonna say to me, yes, it works, I'm able to do what I want. I say, okay, fine. Super glue is an acrylic itself, meaning it's not gonna end up like ABS with a bit of give or some plasticity. It's gonna be brittle. How it works is that when you have a porous material, the bonding agent is gonna hold together. So here's an example how people do, for example, with hot melt. A lot of you guys love hot glue. You've got two material and you have a bonding agent, you have a bonding substance, super glue or hot melt. What it does is that it's relying on the surface of the bond. And we have what we have is a surface bond. So it's like some stiction. If the material is porous, it's better because it spreads. So super glue works well in porous surfaces. All plastic plastics by definition are porous, more or less to some extent. But over time they'll shatter. So I recall a video from uh, Retro Blasting when somebody told him use solvent and uh, he tried to glue polypropylene, didn't work. So polypropylene is a plastic that is very, what we call resilient. It does not like paint, does not like glue, um, unlike the styrene and, and, uh, and the ABS. So as far as bonding, the other options we have is mechanical bond when you have a screw or clamps on the outside or to fuse it. So fusing it is not a bond, it's more like welding. And that is not done with a glue, but with a solvent. So I use these, Tamaya cement. It's technically a plastic cement, plastic solvent. Then we have industrial grade solvent cement. This is industrial, super stinky, super nasty for your health. Got to use it in the well ventilator. Then you got a hobby grade. You go, you got uh, Bondine is one, or uh, uh, see here they call it the uh, same stuff from Micromark, but Bondine. And what are these? These are, okay, well, yeah, it's a, uh, methylene chloride it's super nasty uh, but it is a, a cement it is a solvent so there are different brands out there uh, I recommend don't pour too much on it because you're gonna make things gummy use a lot of well ventilation and uh, typically this stuff is used using a brush right so you apply it so here's a test for example I recommend grab yourself a bottle wearing down so let's say we've got Materials first is going to be identifying the part. Is it plastic or is it styrene? Or is it propylene? How do we know? So if it's really flexible, it's unlikely to be star, uh, to be uh, acrylic. Uh, could it be ABS? Some ABS can be with a bit of give, right? So Lego is a good example where they uh, add in the ABS a bit of polycarbonate. So they've got a specific compositions for some of their uh, Lego Technic gears, the, the, the gray parts, the dark gray parts, they're a little soft. There's a bit of give and that's polycarbonate. Uh, it's high-end stuff, it's more expensive. But here, for example, we know this is polypropylene. It melts, it cannot be glued, and if you paint it, the paint will flake off of it unless you got some fancy paint. So here's a test I'm gonna do, I'll show you. I'm gonna take a, a wood Q-tip, and uh, here's a part from a dip six that I was customizing it you know, and let's cut. I'm gonna put the puddle there. So here's the puddle, and we're gonna let it do its thing. Let's do the same thing on a part that we don't know what it is. And here's the puddle. So typically, this is how it works. On polypropylene, you're not gonna affect the plastic. It's gonna evaporate. See, right there. The solvent evaporated, nothing happened. The way the solvent works is it that it melts the plastic. Here, there you go, see this guy? There you go. So these cars are gonna be permanent. And you see on the top of my Q-tip, I've got some of that stuff. Compare that with this guy here, the solvent evaporated, there's very close to no residue. The plastic has not been affected in any shape or form. 
So therefore, we know that the plastic, so the ABS solvent is going to be effective here because there is either styrene or ABS in it. And this is why they are called uh, ABS and styrene solvent. Same with this guy. Works for styrene, ABS. Oh, this one says acrylic, but eh, I don't trust that. Yeah, butadine. Eh? So bu butyrate or butadine. Okay. So when we break crotches, a lot of you guys resort to super glue and it's going to leave a mark. And if you send it, here's why I recommend you don't do it is when you use super glue, you're essentially putting a bond of a foreign material between the styrene or the ABS. If you use solvent, you fuse the parts. So the parts are one. The trick is don't use too much, use the right amount and per the instructions you put on both sides. So I'm gonna do a demo here. We know we have some figures who have really weak crutches. How to make strong crutches. So I'm gonna show you two things. One is how to fix it. So this works on uh, torso bosses. If your torso shatters, it can be fixed with solvent. If the crotch breaks, it can be fixed with solvent. If your knee pins break, it can fix it, can fix it with solvent. So look, I'm gonna be really rough here and I'm gonna show it. So this way it's more than just talk. I'm gonna walk the walk. Is I'm gonna break this knee. This is hit and run. With, there you go. Oh, look, I broke it, right? So hit and run as a very sturdy pin. I had to use a lot of force, but most of our jaws broke because the knee pins were much thinner. Now here's the trick. Retrieve the parts. And ideally you don't have any uh, rogue fragments that shattered, you can retrieve. So we can replace this guy exactly where it was. So it looks like here we have 50% to get it right. So the trick here, and I've done this many, many times, is we're gonna put some solvents on both ends. And now the tricky part is to place it exactly as it was. So I'm gonna try one way, and no, it doesn't work, there you go, the other way. So if you put too much, it's gonna bubble and you're gonna have a seam because it's gonna melt some extra plastic. This looks decent, so sometimes if you wanna finish up, take, you know, just very lightly, right, and go there where the seam. So this is like welding. Now, here, here is where you need to arm yourself with a lot of patience. I let it dry for a day or two. The mistake with solvent, solvent is not instantaneous. It's not a five seconds or one minute an hour. Leave it for a few days. Let it cure. Put it on top of a, a shelf somewhere, don't touch it. Leave it away. A couple of days and then gets back to it. So that method can be applied on a lot of things. Uh, here, why I was saying to use that on crotch versus super glue is like if you send it, we can make this seamless. So I've shattered knees, I've shattered pelvises, a bunch of places, a bunch of things. Uh, only the forearms and the elbows cannot be cured with it. This is unfortunately something. We don't have a solution because I suspect this is polycarbonate or nylon. So we cannot fix it. But the crotch, the crotch can be fixed. So what I'm gonna do here uh, this is our beloved Tiger Force uh, rescue lifeline. And uh, I know I'm going to crack this sooner or later as you play with it. You know, some figures we know we're, we're, we're afraid to use them because we know something's going to happen. You know, like who else has got it? This one has been repaired. Now you cannot see this. This, this is a broken crotch has been repaired. See? Yeah, you can see a slight misalignment. Okay, oh, this one. So, uh, the method here is one, we can just put some solvent, but we can also reinforce. So here I'm gonna show you a file, so I have some original file. What I've noticed on a lot of figures is that this distance here is um, an issue because it there's like some tension. As you try to move the legs, it's actually putting pressure on the crotch. 
So to alleviate that, and this is at your own risk, again, eh, I'm not a collector, I just want to use these things, these toys. Um, this is something I discovered is by sanding the inside, as I tried to give it some room so that the O-ring, the rubber band, can pull the legs up, not put stress on the crotch. Now what I've discovered is this, if you lift the leg, the leg should be free to move up and down. On some figures, the spherical aspect of this, of the leg, is not, is offset. And what this means is that as you move the leg, it's actually putting pressure on the crotch. So it's bad design. If the figure was properly done, pro properly done, moving the leg should not put any pressure on the crotch. The leg socket should nest on top, the rubber band pulls it up, and the crotch should have, the only function of the crotch is to prevent it from going forward but the socket is deep and it, the rubber band is pulling it upward, so it should, in theory, just go up and that's it. Okay, I'm gonna make the, other, the uh, crotch repair in a separate video.